Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio and welcome to the channel, especially those of you that are just watching us for some of the first times. I like to paint a large variety of subject matter and we go off of what you request onto the channel and we try to answer it. So I had a request to paint some more of the birds of prey that I've done earlier and one of them, of course, my favorite subject is the eagle, the bald eagle. So we're going to paint that today. I'm going to show you how to attack it a la prima. I'm going to be using uh, my favorite palette that I do on my YouTube videos videos. There's one addition today, which is Sapphire. This is the, the three yellows, Hansa, Darulite, Yellow Oxide, Naphtha Red Light, Burnt Sienna, Pine Green. This is Sapphire. This is uh, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Violet, Red Violet, and White. This is the uh, Dervan Open Medium that I use sometimes with the uh, Ala Prima type of techniques. And then I have a cap of extender medium, which is a medium that does the same thing as open medium, it extends to the drying time, but it's thinner. And I'm a thin, thick painter. We'll explain that as we go on uh, with this lesson. And again, like like most of the lessons, I try to, I forget sometimes, and you can just write a comment. Um, but I put a list of these colors in the video description below. So if you need to, any of the links, like to our MeWe group, to our online stores, where do you get paint, look to the video description below. All the links are in there on, uh, you know, where to get something. And if you don't, write me a comment, okay? All right, so what I have here is my eagle. This is one that, a, a purchase photo that I did off Adobe Stock Photo, so I purchased the photo so I can paint it. And then I put it on a 16 by 20 board. Now I didn't use a, a stretch canvas because I don't, I'm gonna put in a, a lot of work in here. Even though it appears very white there, I'm gonna put a lot of tones uh, into this area of his, uh, head and so I don't and, and detail and I don't want to fight the weave of the canvas yeah you can fill it all up with with uh, um, gessos or what we use as canvas prep medium here we don't use gessos in our studio but uh, it just takes a lot of extra time and if I use a really nice this is a, a seven layer oak ply it's a beautiful uh, beautiful piece of wood, a beautiful surface to paint on. It's already nice and smooth. I gave it one coat of canvas prep medium and then sanded it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper and then did my sketch or you could even take a traceable off the photo if you want and uh, you know then which I've showed you in, in other videos and off we go okay so first off what I'm going to do is I of course I have a white background and I have the white here so part of my thought process is here is I'm going to want to put, produce some some darker tones some tones in here I like some of the stuff that's going on here but I want to put some of those tones into the uh uh, into the eagle, but I want to darken them slightly so so that that white's going to come off of this ground. So one of the first things I'm going to do, and I'm not real sure under the background where I'm going to do, so I'm just going to use a little extender, my three quarter inch fusion flat brush. I love sapphire. That's one reason why I have it out here. It's a nice soft and sapphire and burnt sienna make absolutely beautiful grays that will go to paint our bald eagle here. So if you look at these grays, see these are beautiful. I can warm it, I can cool it, I can make beautiful grays that will work right in here. And then I can take it a little more yellow, a little more green, yeah, green. Green and burnt sienna work as well. So that's one reason why I have that sapphire out here. But that sapphire also makes beautiful uh, kind of background, especially if I gray this up with some of this. And I'll leave it slightly to the uh, to the blue side here. And I'm not sure exactly how much, this is what we call vignetting of a background. And I'm not sure exactly how much I will do. So I'm just gonna push some of it in for right now. Just some soft color back here. A little bit of movement. I'll actually go in and add more movement towards the end of the painting. I just wanna produce some colors in here. And the goal of what I'm doing here, the goal is actually just to darken that background just a bit. Now I'm gonna want a, maybe a bit more color right up in here around his head. And again, see, I'm not, I'm not gonna get too perfect. Now, since he's a big vertical uh, surface here, what I try to do is the horizontals, mostly the horizontals. And that, again, just drives interest here. So we'll take our paper towel, just soften it just a bit here. We'll do, we're gonna do a heck of a lot more here towards the end of the painting. But this is just gonna pop off his head a little bit more and, and give me some areas of contrast that I can work in. Maybe a little bit more blue and, and burnt sienna 
right up in here, which is going to be a, a main interest area of him. And so I'll just drop some of that in, maybe leave it just a bit into the uh, horizontal there. We'll do a lot more, like I said, a lot more, okay? So this is just to give your eye a little bit of working. And it's called simultaneous contrast. So if I want the, the head of the eagle here to look lighter, rather than pounding on lots of light, I have to get a dark here. So it's simultaneous contrast, okay? So a color will look different depending on its background, okay? So let me just show you this. I'm gonna take this same color here. So this area right here is a little bit dark. This area is light. So if I push this color right over here, I put it right into there, it looks fairly dark. But if I put it right over here, it looks fairly light. They look like two different colors. Do you see that? They look like, they actually look like two different colors, but it's the same color. Now, why does that happen? That's because the dark in this area surrounding the eagle is doing what we call white justify. It's lightening the color, the look of the color um, when it hasn't actually lighted. And that's called simultaneous contrast. So the same thing's going to happen here with the eagle head. Rather than pounding on and pounding on white because I have such a light background, I will actually add more darks to make the eagle look lighter than what it actually is later on, okay? And I don't know how much yet, but we will because we are professionals, right? Right. Okay, so we have that. Now let's just take some of this... Um, some of this little shadow tone. Let's just put in where we know shadow tones are gonna to be here. So they're gonna pull down, and I'll pull down into the direction that the eagle is gonna have here of the, those fur. This is just my three quarter inch brush, so I can do it quite quite large. One of the things I like to do when I do all the Prima, or I really enjoy when I do animal portrait painting and stuff, what is called the Premier Coup technique, where you start out with shadows working to lights. Shadows are, are worked slightly, um, slightly transparent, and as you get uh, further into lights, you get more opaque. So we could take some burnt sienna, and burnt sienna and some greens make beautiful tones for that eagle here, for the body of that eagle here. And that's warm. Those two are two warm colors. So if I want to go in and shadow in here, I can take just a touch. So you see this, we'll spin that out. See, it's nice and warm. If I can take just a touch of the blue, and that'll instantly cool it, so will a touch of our violet really cool it because that gets it right into the, the purpley violets here. Let's add a bit of the extender medium to thin it out. And this is just an idea here. So I know my shadows in here, look at that beautiful tone. I mean, that's the tone that you see inside of, side of uh, him there. And so I know my shadows are gonna come right inside of here. Sometimes I don't know why I do all that sketching because I just paint it out, but we can get that. So in, through here's gonna be his body into his main body shadow. And I do wanna, I do wanna keep most of that, but see, I wanna keep my brushwork out here very light and airy, especially as I'm heading out. And there's some of his feathers here that actually pull out. So we might use a little calligraphy. So this is what we call the calligraphy. It's this way and this way. And the, the way in which you angle and use your brush is going to um, basically state the shape or and the, the flow of the body, the body feathers and stuff. So, you know, we call that the calligraphy of the brush here. So just like you you know, write calligraphy in words and everybody writes them slightly different. You can have different calligraphy. Every artist will be a little different with their calligraphy, but there'll be a, a more larger right up through here. We'll have a dark and let some of that just fade out through there. Where I'm gonna do a very much, even on his body here, very much vignetted uh, look to his feathers and everything here because I want the I want the viewer to remain the viewer to really come into here but I want to um, my goal here is to really get an interest of in what do we call a vignetted interest to the, the eagle out here as well here so we'll push out with some feathery strokes there we'll let his body let's thin this way out so all this will, will eventually probably change, but it just is just part of the thought process. I wanted to, his body to thin out out here 
And so I don't want, you know, we've got beautiful uh, secondary feathers here as it's heading to his primaries. And I just want to do this, just whisper them off so that they, his body's kind of fading away as it's going out away from the, uh, you know, or out of the painting, away from the center interest of the painting. So we'll push a little bit of this in here, just a bit. You can kind of see how that's going to go. We'll do a lot more onto that. But that gives me some ideas uh, of the dark. See, that's what I'm looking for. So as I come up through here, you know, where's the, the light and the dark here of his shoulder here, his wing here? Where's it all going to go up into his feathers there? And so it gives me something to uh, work some colors to work up against. And it's gonna make, through simultaneous contrast, it's gonna make some of these, see, I just warm this up, more burnt sienna. See the slightly different tone I get. That's what I like to have in there, that modeling of those tones. So that those tones, like see a good burnt sienna stroke right in there, really shows up different inside of that there, see? And uh, so those tones are so very important to the the, to the interest of your subject here. So we'll drop that in. That's gonna be pretty good. Let's just thin that out. We'll go more yellows up and through here as well, but we'll just thin that out. See, I might just leave some of this calligraphy out like that as well, concentrating up onto his body. And with that in mind, now that I get that dark up there, let's go up here with a bit more of our blues, maybe some of this burnt sienna and stuff into that. And let's just drop in a little bit more dark. Can we afford to go that dark? If you question it too much, take some of it out here. That's always my rule. Take it out. It's better to go more layers later on than it is to go too much darker. You can always lighten it though. We, we are, we can lighten it. But let's just pop a bit of that. Cause those are beautiful, that's a beautiful tone in and out of there. It's right between the blue and the burnt sienna, and I kind of like that. We'll put maybe a little vertical, a little line into that, out like that. Maybe uh, I took out too much right here, so we'll go right up to his body there. And just, see, I like I like the vignetted lines. That's one of the things that, that uh, as me as a production painter, that sells really well for it. And, and, I like to slowly add it too, so I'm, you know, it, it's okay to, to do that. Now see over here, as we get to this darker shoulder area, we could go back just a little lighter blue, maybe a little more blue and burnt sienna right in here, like that. See, those are beautiful tones. Even letting a little of that burnt sienna come out through there, get some of those strong horizontals in there because nice brush marks of those horizontals because that is what's, Really can. Let's carry some of that body color right up through there. See, that's a beautiful tone in there as well. Right like that. Just kind of carries it through. So you're just going to get this model-y background. Should work. <laughs> okay. This is how I love to approach the, the painting of it. So I don't work. I'm not going to work the entire, um, you know, painting here. Uh, the entire, his entire body, you know, or, or background, the vignette of the background yet because I want to be able to adjust it. Now I'm gonna go down to a number eight flat here. I'm gonna back out with just the edge of my dirty wet paper towel here. Just a bit, just use the edge of a wet paper towel. Back out of that that beak. Now one reason why, I, you know, I don't always do that, but here he's, his beak is gonna be very much yellow and I don't want those colors to mix up into there and um, make a green here real well. So we're gonna start out, now we're, so we've got some of our shadow tones in. We're gonna start out, let's go over here with some Hansa yellow and some Darulite yellow. I've painted the eagle several times and that always works for his beak. I'm gonna start out kind of light here. I'm gonna work in a little bit of white. So Darulite yellow, yellow ox, uh, and Hansa yellow. And so it's nice and light. This will help block off and really pop forward the yellow of his beak. We'll do some more colors in here in just a bit, but that will just kind of set that in for right now. Nice glowy, gl glowy, is that a word? Glowy, it's, a, it's an artistic word. It's a nice glowy part of his beak here. 
We'll set that in right back here. They, their beak always goes back, way back here to the, the mid plane of the eye. And so it always kind of, to me, except for this nice hard ridge, it makes him look angry. He's, uh, and that's controlled by this ridge here on his eye. It always makes him look like he smiles just a little bit until you look at that ridge of that eye here. Let's take a bit of the, the um, yellow oxide and some of our mottled burnt siennas and stuff here. And we're going to go back into a shadow plane, so I'm going to add some extender here. And I'm going to add just a bit of this kind of yellow glowish color back in here around his, into his eye socket. And we'll pull some of that down. Because when we're painting white, you want to get a nice mottled surface here of all kinds of tones. That's what makes them pretty. So see kind of the yellowish undertone there. You could also add, we could also change up this eagle and add violets and stuff like that. Depending on what colors you want your, into your background. Violets would be really pretty as well. But uh, let's just start out here with this. Let's go a bit of the... This is all beautiful. Anything burnt sienna, greens, bur uh, burnt sienna, greens, blues, a little bit of violets, any of that just makes beautiful grays. And since I'm going to come up now onto his head where I'm eventually going to do a little more work of the yellows, I'm going to come in here. And I know this is dark, but what is going to make the lights look lighter? Darks. So we're going to start out kind of dark. We'll paint some of this out, but it's going to help us in the long run. Let's just put in a little bit up there for some roundness up underneath his beak here. Let's just pull that down a bit. Don't get too carried away and take out everything. Always think less is more here. Let's add a touch of it in here around his eye. Right back in there. We'll just model and touch. And I like to use a larger brush so I can use corners of the brush to get different movements. I'm a, I love to paint for movement. Those of you that paint roses with me know I'm always saying, don't paint petals, paint movement here. I like movement. Let's blue this up a bit here so it's not all exactly the same. And just pull some of that down there. That'll look fine. Some of this can come out this way. Some of this can come out this way. This is ju I just follow the calligraphy of his feathers here, what I want into his feathers. So I'm looking, I'm peering through and looking for shadow. And when we're doing that, now it's time to get myself a fresh paper towel. So when we're doing that, one of the things we want to do is work on that beak. That beak. Let's go down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go down. To, I'm going to set that brush in. For a bit. I'm going to go to, and I'm going to shock you guys by going to quite a bit smaller of a brush. Now, I left a little burnt sienna in that. Those of you don't see me do this. You know, I carry hand sanitizer next to my uh, my painting all the time. Not for COVID or anything like that. It's because this hand sanitizer is a perfect solvent for the paint. Even after days and days, it'll take it out. So, if I leave a brush, like I worked, this one was working details, obviously, with it, and left a little bit of stuff in it, I just take it out with some hand sanitizer. It takes it right out. And because uh, it's 60% isopropyl alcohol, which is the binder, you know, which breaks the binder in the acrylic paints. And then my brush is perfect again. So if you have brushes, that's why one thing I love about acrylics, you have brushes in there, leave paint in there, we can take it back out. But I'm going to go to a smaller brush. This is a little synthetic. It's not a fusion. It's a synthetic filbert. And I like the little synthetic filbert for when I do detail work and stuff like that. And so I'm going to, I, to me, the eagle has a beautiful beak. And so I'm going to want to concentrate some of my brush calligraphy and what I do up here around the beak. So this is yellow oxide and darulite. I'm going to tap it around in a few areas. I'll end up changing the tone again and doing some other things, but we'll pull down maybe right down in here. And I use the small brush so I get movement into the beak. That's what I'm looking for is to get this movement. Now let's go a little burnt sienna and, and that yellow oxide. So yellow oxide, a little burnt sienna. I'm competing against the train. I just love living here in the Midwest and the trains. You know, that's one reason why I love this studio, this building, is because you can hear the trains. I love trains. So we'll come up here and we'll drop in that lower part of his beak right in there. Matter of fact, let's go just a bit darker. Even some of the 
body color of the eagle here. So it carries that tone up in there. We'll drop that in. So you get that dark. Maybe a bit more on the gray side. I see it just a little bit more on the gray side, right up over here to this side. We'll drop some of that in. Maybe up and around his little smiley edges here. We'll drop some of that in. A little bit more of the gray. Greens and darks right up here by the top into his eye socket. Right up over here coming down the back side of his eye socket. So it's it's got a bit of that yellow in there. I don't have quite enough. I can get some more. I don't have quite enough. Get a bit more of that yellow right up in here. Drop some of that in there. There, just like that. That's pretty good. And let's just take that, thin it out. Thin that out here and work just a bit up above the ridge of the eye. Now this is important right up here because if you just go light to dark, it's gonna make his his eye socket, the, the, the upper part of his, of his uh, above his eye socket, so harsh looking. So you want to carry a little bit of that tone up there. That's the one thing I've learned about painting eagles like that when they have that huge ridge line. Let's take some um, burnt sienna and a little bit of our blues, darker colors here. We'll go ahead and put his nostril in. And I'd like to just lift it up and tap it a few times or even just touch it with my finger so I get some different uh, tone so I get like a little dark area and a little light area right around there I like to do that okay so that's got that part let's get now we'll let's look into narrowing down so what I do is I look at the eagle overall and then my vision starts to narrow down smaller and smaller and smaller into smaller detail areas and there's a lot of wildlife painters and I'm one of them that really think that you should work the the center of interest first before you get too wrapped up in going outside everything because the center of interest or in this case that eagle those eyes and that beak right in there is going to control everything that happens in this painting so the contrast and the edges and everything I set up there are going to control everything else so I need to get that area not finished but pretty close to finished before I go stepping out everywhere else let's take a little burnt sienna a little bit of yellow, more burnt sienna in this. And let's get down by that tip of his beak here where it gets a bit more. And so your vision narrows down. You start looking a little bit more into the tip and you can, I mean, I can see real finite details as I start to do this. Like the tip of his beak is just a touch darker and I might want to just emulate that. Um, this is a, you know, a bit more orange here. I'll just pinch wipe my brush, maybe put in just a bit of extender. Let's get over here towards the Darulide, which will give it more of an orange. And I can even touch a touch, tiny, tiny bit of the naphthol red light, which will orange that up a bit more. And maybe just a gentle wash of that thin right down there. We'll even touch right there into that darker part of the the beak there just to give him a bit. And this is where I start working through. So I've got some of the oranges and stuff. I'll work through some of my yellows. I start modeling some of these colors up and pulling brush strokes, marks, what I call marks. So I, I have a feeling that some of this comes down this way and I'll leave a bit of texture or a bit of brush mark in there so I get this modeled interest in there. So I don't want to, you don't want to come in there and work it too many times. And this is one thing, you want to come in here on your palette and you want to grab that tone pretty close to accurate because that, that what it is going to be. Now I'm going to work on the backside of the beak, which is a little bit greenish and a little bit orangish right in here. And this will come at to after time of learning to see and paint tones. But what I want to do, see, is each brush marks, and Sargent told us this, each brush mark that you take, each calligraphy stroke or mark that you take adds that interest. And it, But if you go in there and work it and work it and work it, it disappears. And this is the most important thing, guys. It disappears, okay? So 
which means that you've got to concentrate here on the palette, getting the tone pretty much to perfect. You don't want to, so many people say, oh, you need to paint that in oils. Well, if oil, a lot of people like to paint in oils because it gives them time to adjust the tone. But if you go in there and wet and wet and blending and adjust the tone, you lose the calligraphy and you lose the interest. So it doesn't make a difference. Look at the interest that I'm getting in here. It doesn't make a difference whether or not I'm painting in acrylics or if I'm painting in oils. It's the interest. I can't. I, I can't come in here and blend because I I tone paint. So I'm looking for interest. So as I come up to the top of that beak, I'm going to head up to Hansa Yellow and to the light. So this is my beak that I'm working in here. I head up Hansa Yellow and Light. And as I head to Highlights with Ala Prima or Premier Coup like I'm doing here, I like to get it a little bit more opaque. So... I'm going to set that down. You can see just now the nice harsh contrast right there. And just a, I want more interest to that beak. So I'm going to go back to what we call a half tone. Head back to my Darulide. Here maybe a touch of yellow oxide. And it's just a touch, tiny bit orange. So we'll work just a tiny bit of that orange. Just a little bit of color here. And I'm going to read it on here. It's kind of pulling down this way just a bit, mainly for that nostril. And I'll tap up into that and pull down here and give a, another little tone coming across there like that. I, that is a good tone. I could push that in just a touch lighter right up here and maybe down that edge just a bit there like that. And I'll play those tones right down here on the other side. Usually a beak like this, I'll paint it three, four times to get some of the tonal interest that I want to get. And the slightest little change, a little bit more orange into it here, will pull down just a touch more. Leave a little bit of calligraphy in there. Just adds so much to him, see? Now let's uh, take an edge of that Hansa and a yellow. What I'm going to do is that Hansa on white leave a little edge of it. This is what I call the drawing edge of the brush. I'll use just the chisel here and we'll pull that line around like that and let's just darken it just a bit. We'll put the lower part of his beak in there. And it's awful small to try to get that line in there so what I do is I'll just come back maybe a bit of burnt sienna, some of those yellows into my brush using just the chisel here and I'll, I'll drag it a little bit and I'll tap it a little bit and drag it to put the the uh, let's go a little thicker here just uh, maybe a touch of green because I kind of see a greenish bit in there that that all comes with time guys that all comes learning to see the tones of what you see in here comes from practicing your tones so I see just a bit of that coming in through there like that. And I could use just a small little touch of that right up underneath here. Right there like that. And I can re reinforce that Hansa, I mean, excuse me, that uh, yellow oxide. We'll put a little dirty light Hansa into it right down in here again. And generally when I, when I do a, like a full-blown uh, portrait of the birds and stuff, is that I'll, I'll concentrate on those highlights. Like these highlights that are here, I'll paint a couple more times to really give textures. And we might do that because they do add a lot more interest to them. Okay? All right, so let's come in here and let's set the dark. So let's go with the burnt sienna, our thalo blue, some of our red, our, our violets here, a nice cooler color here. Let's set the dark of the pupil of the eye here. And uh, so we'll just drop that in here like that. That's pretty good. Okay, and then what I'll do is, you know, wipe that on my brush just a bit. I've got it really full of paint from mixing. So, and I'll take it down till I have just an edge of it here. And I like to, you know, I, I like I don't like to use a round because sometimes it leaves a ridge of paint. So even when I'm doing detail work like this, I use the edge of a small filbert, and then I'll paint out what I don't need. I can see that line widens just a little bit right up here, 
This is going to help the expression of the eagle here. And there'll be the shadow of the eye, of course, we'll have to put in and everything. But uh, let's soften that with a little bit of our burnt sienna yellow here. And uh, drop this shadow line out, out here like that. Okay. Which helps that. Okay. And uh, let's just, let's not, let's not clean the brush. Let's just pinch wipe it off here. We have our yellows. I'm going to take a, even use a little open medium yellow, some of that dirty color. And let's grab some light. So that's going to be real close. It's slightly yellow. So let's get just a bit more yellow here. Dirty grade yellow. And we'll just kind of tap that in here for the, the light part of his eye, the iris of the eye here. Just kind of tap that around there for a minute. Maybe a bit more light. So just a touch lighter towards the bottom here right in that area because he's going to have a shadow across the front of his eye and we'll have to let that uh, kind of uh, dry up a bit tack up a bit before we go doing some of that but that'll push that in let's take some of that light because going out here it's a little bit more gray so what makes good grays these out here matter of fact if you keep a little extender mixed out here these are good grays these are burnt siennas and blues these are all really good grays right in here. And even a bit of your yellows in there. This all make beautiful grays. So let's come right back in here with some of these. Now don't, you know, this is called modeling where I don't mix it up too much here. I'll add that light, maybe model in some of that blue and stuff here. And uh, let's pull down that little cheek area right there. And then it swirls back up this way. We'll just tap along right up in here a bit, which will put just a bit of more character in and around that eye here. I could darken that down just a bit and uh, pull. And I, I look for the movement of the, the calligraphy or the movement of the of the feathers and stuff here into the eye socket. How how are they moving? So I'm going to lighten back up again and I read it maybe a bit yellow here too. So I read it like this is kind of swirling down like this just a bit there. And so the more that you read it like that, the, the closer you get to capturing your subject. So I pick up like little little movements right in there. And that's so important because that's in and around the, the main part of his eye. So I want to capture some of those little movements there. Um, little touches of yellow, burnt sienna, bit of blue, green, kind of color. But just get that burnt sienna in there. Maybe just a bit of green here. Real soft. Just a little bit in your brush will capture some of that pulling down motion right there. It's right underneath the round part of his eye there. And then uh, just a bit more of it here in the front. Right in there. And if I take out too much of those lights, which a lot of times I do, <laughs> I get to do them again. But I love to paint, so do them again. It's not so, it's not so bad. But I like to you know, make an adjustment, go back, read it, look at what I need to do, and do it again. So I'll just make a couple of little minor adjustments to the movement right in there that I feel helps capture the movement of that around that eye. This is this is the area that you work the most on because this is this interest area of the eagle. So we'll pull some of that movement back down this way. A couple of nice movement marks here without taking off too much stuff there. Okay, in other words, I'm not... Uh, doing it too many times because it'll paint it out really easy. Let's uh, pull some of these feathers down this way. Set some of that movement up here. And I'll go back and forth between light and shadow as I set some of these areas in to set, see how going the light and to the shadow there is, and I'm looking for the movement. I'm not looking for feathers. I'm looking for the movement here. Let's gray down, yellow that just a bit. Bring that right down here. That could be a bit grayer. 
just a bit grayer in the brush right in there that's a good color and uh, we've got to get that see that little touch of lighter almost yellow oxide back here on the back side there that's pretty good I could have a and I I start to really finite down my eye here in looking at it that you know I need a bit more shadow right up underneath there and watching that and you know sometimes that you know when I touch something I'll I'll paint out by mistake and do it again and until I get this eye until I get this capturing of him there a little closer and a little closer but using a small little brush like this and I like the you know more so than working around a lot of artists will use like a small round and stuff or they use like a um a, a little dagger striper or something like that which is great every artist is different they're always going to like what you want but you know try a small uh, a small synthetic filbert like this because you can roll it on the edge you can roll it here you can use it more flat um, and it works really well at least it does for me let's get back up here to some yellows some light not pure white and let's add some of the down strokes here now up and along his face and around his face here are some of the shortest feathers so I tend to add a lot of movement here but small small movements like that and we're going to build this up and this is really where i'm going to take some just thick white this is really where i like to like build some light and texture right up there we'll take this a bit softer here with some yellow right up by the edge paint down into that shadow there just a bit right up here by this edge get up here by my sketch lines where he is but I'll leave some of that now over on the, the other side it's hard to see but on an eagle these will come in this way here because this is his other big ridge of his eye so I want to pull some of these this is the I, and I got to build it better right there but this is the the top here of his nose so these are this is the center line right here of his head he's foreshortened slightly so I want to build that out, build these feathers, follow good shape following strokes here. So his, um, let's take some yellow oxide right up here like this. And this is the center part, top of his beak there. So we'll make it a little bit more pronounced. And we'll go hit that Hansa and that light right up there. Hit that just a bit like that. That's kind of nice. Oh, I do like that Hansa. You know, I might take a Hansa stroke, even though a little lighter than what you see on the, the eagle himself, and just hit that little ridge there. I do like, you know, even around their beak, nostril, and stuff, I just don't like it to always be a hole there. So I usually like to tap around a little bit and add because it is kind of an interesting little structure on them so i i usually kind of tap around there a bit depending upon uh, how much time the size of your eagle and stuff you know you know it's uh it's how much time you have to work on something as a production painter you know it's just and uh and because that's what i am i'm a production painter I like to show you guys great things, but if you decide to be a, you know, selling artist, you got to do great stuff, and you got to do it a little quicker, <laughs> so that you can make a, if you want to make a living at it. I love teaching artists how to make a living at it, because I've made a wonderful living at this, and, uh, but it just means you have to grab stuff, and you got to grab it a little quicker. Let's grab, take some of that light, right down here, real light pressure of the brush, so I can do what we call scumble which is a light little glazing of it, just right down like that, pushing that movement in, tapping that around a bit, and it'll add a lot more interest there up into the eagle. Now, let's leave that yellow in the brush. We'll go back to our whites, which are going to make it really warm, you know, mostly white right in here now, and we'll put a couple of big, you can see the yellow in it, though, a couple of big strokes of that right back up here. And I want to drag, this is something I like to do, is I'll take that 
and I'll hold the brush. This makes more of a fractured edge right along the top up there. And I'll fracture that edge a bit there. There, like that. Now, how much you do that straight line depends on his anger. And, you know, I'm really... I'm really finicky about getting the expression line, which is because here, correct. And that is mostly controlled, really. There's just a slight, like a half tone, just a half a value less light up underneath, which breaks that line slightly, softens his look just a bit. See, so he's not quite so angry. He is a little bit more angry than what I have here, and that's this line can drop down just a bit more with some texture right there. And I'll leave that, kind of like that. There's one at the back of his eye. Do you see that? Pulling down at this angle. So I'll leave a few little brush marks. Ah, I hit it too close there. So I, I encroached on his eye too much. So I'll take, I wanted to show you how to screw it up. <laughs> so I'll take some, I'm not worried about it. It's, I'll take some uh, burnt sienna, maybe a bit of the blue, some of the gray color here. And we'll just back it back out just like I know what I'm doing here. Just back some of that back out there again. And uh, that's better, it could have a bit more of a darker blue light, so just a tiniest bit of thalo into that. I love the, the, the sapphire, I put it out because it's really easy to make grays with the burnt sienna. The thalo is not quite as easy, so the sapphire goes pretty easy. And that's one reason why I use it here. And uh, so now let's go back to that yellowy white here. And this time, Dave, let's use a little more restraint here. Pull that back just a bit. That'll work. We can get a little bit more light up and to the back here. Set some direction here. And boom, I like when the colors just come out of my brush like that. But you can see, as a matter of fact, this brush is getting a bit small. I still want to use it, but it's getting a bit small. I'm going to go even up to my big eight here, six or an eight. We'll put the light here. We'll put a little warm into it. We'll add some open medium here. And we'll do a few calligraphy strokes, just a couple of them here. That'll set some of that direction there of his head that big light let's let's even go more texture white let's try this heavier light boom right up through there i like that this see a bit of that texture there too just gives that nice ridge there's going to be some more of that right here and I put a couple small, very light lines on the pattern. I mean, not the pattern, but the photo there. So I can, and then I put the lines over here so I can see where the reference is to watch the, the flow of that particular uh, area. And I got it off just a touch there. So I'll just soften that back. But I want to gray this up just a bit, some open medium. As I head to the lighter colors, I tend to add, I switch from extender to open medium, so my colors go on thicker. See the, see the more body to the color? So the colors go on thicker, and they, the open medium has a, a bit of a stiffness to it, so it tends to drag, and that's what I like here. And uh, so then I'll lighten that up just a bit here and add a few little calligraphy marks of that. See, each one of those strokes is kind of a predetermined, kind of in my mind where I'm going to put it. I just don't throw them in there because they've got direction and they've got tone and they've got the, the look that I want to keep. Let's put a little bit of shadow, more body into that shadow right there. That's better. That's still a little weak on the back side of his head here, so we'll bring that up just a touch here, just like that, there, that's good, and I could, he's got that other kind of bump on his, uh, his head right back here, which I haven't sketched in too much, but let's just drop a bit more, 
a bit of texture there. Take that. A bit more texture right up here. Boom, just like that. There, that's good. That gives a nice head to him there. A little different, but not too bad. And then we'll use the chisel of our brush out here to get that lost, that feathery little edge out there. Out like that on his head. Now, these will probably dry down right here. So as they dry down, I might want to add some more textured lights like this. Just follow that down. This bottom one here curves like that. Follow that, and that got a little bit light there. So what I do is I just come back, let's get some more burnt sienna's, and that blue, a little bit of that green, a little bit of that blue there, just some nice, beautiful grays here. And let's just, because I lost that gray that's right in there. You can see that. So I'll bring that right back in again, just pulling and stroking the other way. And sometimes, it, you know, it is a brush. I try, I try to follow a lot of what Sargent's teachings are to use as large a brush as possible in a given uh, color passage. A passage of color is a, a particular area of color. And uh, sometimes you just got to go down to a little smaller brush. So here's a little number four right out there like that. I try to capture that edge of him here. There we go. There, and it leaves some of that modeling around there because that's just all character to his face, you know? So we'll leave some of that. Let's get down here, some softer, and we'll pull a little bit of that right down through there like that. Let's go a little lighter, get that open medium in here. Okay. And just pull, just flatten out that brush and pull down following the the movement of his head there. Don't don't restroke that. If you go in there and stroke it again and again, you'll destroy it. Now if you do destroy it, which I did a thousand times before I learned to not do that, then uh, what you do is you just take some dark and you go back up. You know, like there's some beautiful like now that you look at this, look at that underlying tone of burnt sienna right in there. Boy, you can go capture that. We can go do that. Let's take a little burnt sienna, a little green here. And it's a shadow, so let's go thin. And let's just whisper some of that color back in up underneath here like that. See how that thin color is the secret there because see that real quick, it doesn't destroy what I did because the thicker color overpowers it. But it's a thin shadow, so I can push it on and I have some time to work with it. Now, to soften that out or to add some more interest in there. Let's go thicker. We'll go a little more gray, thick, some open medium. This color will have more power, and but I won't use, I won't press very hard, but see, it'll sit up on top. It's a thin, thick thing, okay? And this is one reason why I love to go back and forth between the, the open medium and the extender, because I'm controlling the thickness, and my paints right now feels like I have a tremendous amount of control on them as I start to to uh, work the direction of those feathers there. I have a tremendous amount of control because I'm using thicker paint right now. And uh, just kind of flowing on those, those areas there. And uh, yeah, that works. That could be just a bit wider right here, pulling down. There, down like that. So we'll get some of those beautiful tones in there. I could build a little bit more texture right up in there. Yeah, that's good. And uh, let's come down over to the other side. Now, this right in here is pretty much tacked up. So sometimes if you want to paint wet into wet, I don't necessarily always do that, but if you want to, just go add some extender. Take a little bit of gray. It doesn't have to be the same gray. Matter of fact, it's prettiest if it's not. Take a little bit of your grays here, and your greenish. Add some extender to it, and re rework that area there a 
bit so you have something to work into if you want to streak down into that. I'm going to pull that all the way down here because this is the shadow side of it. And I like that shadow. I like that power there. So if I get this too, and very important here, guys. If I get this too light, I reduce the roundness and the power of that head. So i got to be really careful here. Matter of fact, I'm going to take a bit of that shadow right up here. I kind of, just a bit of that. Kind of like that right up in there. Yeah, that, that works better. Okay, so now we'll come up in here. So let's not go pure white. Let's gray it down just a bit. Maybe take it down to a value 8 or so. And that's, a, that's getting right down to between a 9. If it shows up as a 9, it'll dry to an 8. So let's dry it down just a bit and pull that out. Pull these feathers out here like this. See, that's a... Even though it's a little darker than what that other one is right over there, that's really kind of pretty. And it's really allowing the head to come out. Now, I'll just use the chisel a little back and forth. I'll push it, lift it, soften it, use some different uh, different um, types of um, pressures. It's all about pressure. Don't just push your brush down. It's all about pressure. Let's put a little more light right up here, just like that. That looks pretty good. I like the ridge of the underlying of part of his throat here, so I'm gonna bring that ridge down just a bit there. Accentuate it even just a, a bit more than what you see on that photo, because I do like that. Let's uh, pull down just a bit more. We'll pull some slightly perfect ones there. And, uh, just a touch lighter. I'm watching the, the head that I don't get this too much like the lightness of his head so that uh, this head area here comes back as lighter. Step back and look at that. That's the camera one that's sitting at eight feet. So that's, that's, a, pretty good, that's a pretty good run. Now, before we decide, do you need more white, let's decide if we need more contrast with that simultaneous contrast. So let's grab some of our blue and the burnt sienna. Let's grab some of that and we'll do a, a little bit more painting right here. We'll just pull out just a bit more here and decide, is that the... Uh, now, I don't like to just stop right by the beak because that creates what I call a tangent line in the painting, a, a continuous line. Where it's, and so I like to take it out a little bit further than that. And uh, that, that kind of looks nice. Now, I do, I'm going to grab a one inch brush here. Let's do that a little bit more. Do that just a bit more here. We'll start right in here and just pull that out. Maybe come back in towards that too. There, and uh, soften that out. That didn't soften quite, quite correctly there, but I do like that. And if I want to make it darker in there, I, I added the water, which cut right through. That's why that cut through there. But don't worry, I'm a professional. I'll fix it. Okay. <laughs> it's like, you know, that sometimes it's a great idea, but you just kind of made a mistake. But that's okay. So we'll just kind of pull out just a bit. And we'll have to let that tack for just a minute because it's going to keep lifting, because I added that little bit of water. I should have used extender. It waters your solvent, and so if you get it around too much, it'll, it'll pick up and move things. So we want to use extender. That's one reason why you want thin. You want to use extender more than anything else, so that the extender doesn't uh, pick it up here. Oh, I like that, and then going right into that, the edge there. That's kind of neat. I like brush marks and movements, and I like brush calligraphies and stuff. It's just uh, really, really fun. And 
you know, having this burnt sienna, sometimes after I start to read the painting, I start to get more and more brave with color here. Having a little bit of a burnt sienna here, just as a, a touch here. It's just kind of a neat little touch. Let's do another one of those because today's a brave day. And like I always tell everybody, you know, when you're trying to find your particular techniques of what you're going to do as an artist and stuff, it's just a little bit of paint and a brush. Just give it a try. It doesn't hurt anything. It's a bit of paint and a brush. That's all it is. Let's take this um, lighter blue, a little burnt sienna, but more of the blue, this gray, softer color. Let's just push that right up here a bit more. Yeah. Let that just come through. We'll put his head back up on top of that a touch more. Let's use a big bit of that there. That's kind of neat. See, I like, and you can, you know, put an overall general tone through the painting here as well. I guess I should get rid of that light area that I did. See, it's even though it's dried there with the heritage for just a little bit, water's your solvent. So you can just take some of that out. We'll take it all there. There we go. Yeah, that's going to... I need to get this dry, which it isn't yet. So we'll, we'll fix that. Then we can fix that other thing I did. Let's take some of that burnt sienna, a little bit of blue here, soften that gray. And uh, put down that idea of that wing line there. And so I'll work some of this. So if I want a real good deep shadow, burnt sienna and the thalo blue, nice grays, burnt sienna and the, the sapphire blue. There we go. There's that one. And that works great. And you can switch it off, adding some yellows and stuff, which are great you know, warms it and, and stuff a bit, which are great. Um, what I'm going to want to do here, let's see. I'm going to want to build up, I, I'm my thinking, this is part of my idea, is to build more of that front wing coming up just a bit and then letting it fade off. So as I come down here, my friend, let me just thin out. I'm going to burn in a little bit of blue. Thin out little extender some of these strokes so when I'm these are the secondary flight feathers I'm just gonna suggest them with some movement of my brush here like this I won't paint them I'll suggest them maybe a touch more burnt sienna so it's a bit different here streak this down so I'll give the feeling of larger feathers but I'm not gonna paint them essentially here I'm gonna let them kind of fade off like that okay and I'll paint some more details up into these up here so let's come back up here a little burnt sienna and blue little shadow here color and I'll paint these up in here a bit more which I don't know why I drew these all on I just painted them all out but <laughs> And so let's get some, a touch of light. As I go to the light, I'll go more bird sienna, a little yellow, a little bit of light. Let's get that lighter brown right up here. That'll pull through. And thin it out as I go out towards my vignetted area. Thin it out and just streak it out so that you see the color kind of fading away let's uh i like sometimes to take just powerful especially if i'm you know if i'm working vignetted and all a prima or a premier coup just take some powerful shape following strokes that just set the, the direction of something you know without and then just let it fade out that's what i like and what sells very well for me so it uh you know and it's fun to do and it's fun to do. If you do too much, just take light back the other way. Let's just model that up there a bit. There. 
that works. We can take some of that nice dark burnt sienna and thalo blue and uh, you could cool it with a little red violet. We can paint up just a bit more of the negative painting here is taking the dark and painting into the light. And so we can uh, take a bit of that in there. Let's get a touch of burnt sienna right in there. So you get that powerful sienna coming out there. And maybe a little bit of the yellow with that as well right in there. There's smaller feathers here. See, that just gives me a nice modeling of these tones right in there that really kind of drive your eye right up into that area there. Let's take some of the light. So it's, as I'm working this and I'm working through this, I'm kind of thinking, how do I want to bring out? So I set the, the kind of the foundation color here like that for where his wing is going to be and stuff like that. But I have not yet decided just how much I'm going to do on the feather. And I'm probably going to do a little bit more, you know, than, than what you see there. But it's just part of the process. So a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll sit there and they, people always say, well, how do you design how you do this? I have an idea of vignetting, taking out and vignetting the eagle. How much I'm going to do, I let the, it start to talk to me basically. It's not nutty. They do talk to you. <laughs> it's let them kind of talk to me a bit as to uh, what's going to be happening. I'm going to let that dry up a bit because I don't like to keep painting it while it's wet. I'm going to go back to my number four here and um, I'm going to work that lower jawline I see on him with some, we have some light and some gray. That lower jawline here has to pull across this way a bit. Just like that. There. That helps build that. Let's go a little bit more gray. Pull that across here a little bit wider. Just like that. That pulls, helps with his head there. Could have just a touch more light for interest right there. Boy, noisy trains today. And we'll put just a bit more, bit just tiny touches here with the, the light of the brush and the chisel of your small number four here. Rather than using a point of a round, which would make it absolutely perfect, we I, I like to use that little chisel. And I'll work a bit of this out here let it let the uh, light grays here just sit proud of the background strokes so the movement here comes back to the head and we'll take a touch lighter right up over here just like that that looks pretty good pretty good this is a could be a lighter little stroke look at that you know just don't pull long strokes they you know look at your you know look at your subject here and kind of read you know there's small little light strokes here little feathery strokes that come out here to the outside so let's read just a few of those i like to take light and do little scumbling looks here which I just drag the brush very little over it. It just departs like little shines, little lights, little interest that goes on in those particular areas. Now, overall, I, I do kind of like the beak. Usually I'll work the beak again, but I do. I'm kind of liking it in its position. This little more light and texture can come right up here. You'll see the texture in my brush, just dragging that a bit there and uh, bringing a little more interest. It could have a better flow right in and out of that beak area there, just lightly like that and maybe a bit of gray right in there. And we'll set that light back up on top here. Boom, just like that. So 
that gives kind of a nice it's pretty close to him there's some um, you know a few areas of a uh, you know taking a bit of that dark and correcting that that that's so important up and around his eye there because that just gives him you know his expression here a little bit of that light there this gives him his expression and uh I got a just a bit more light texture to pull this way on the top of his head which flattens it out a bit he's not he's rounding just, uh, a bit more than what he should he shouldn't I'm going to take a little gray and this is what I say you can paint back through here to change anything paint back through let's flatten his head his stroke here just a bit more Part of that is that little shadow right there. So let's just flatten that shadow as well. There, there we go. That flattens out his his head a bit more. Bit of a line there, but we can take care of that. We'll just push that right in there like that. That flattens him out a bit. That gives him a pretty good look. Now, this has had time to tack up a bit. So. Generally, when I paint a lot of small flowers, and I've done it on owls and everything else, I'll take the light, a small light like this, and I did another eagle in one of my classes that I was, I spent a lot of time doing this and setting up the feathering. And as you go down the feathering here, they get a little larger, the little, the little U shapes, the, and they go from little U shapes to little V shapes. Here, and they get a little larger, and uh, here, and and this is kind of what I'm thinking is, I'll do a few of these here, won't do them all because I'm going to let it vignette out, let it just soften out here, and fade away, because so I want his wing to fade away. But this is one of the things about the eagles is, boy, you know, when uh, you decide you're going to paint an eagle, you better decide that you like to do this because <laughs> there's a lot of them. And we'll just, we'll let some of this just kind of fade away here. We'll let it go a little more brown. Hit some red there. So I'll just, rather than killing that, let's add a little green here. That's pretty good. Some of these lights can come down here. Now, what I do then is I work down the scale to dark. So I'm gonna take some burnt sienna, some green, a little bit of yellow here. And yeah, that's a good color. I paint down and out what I don't need in this light, following the shape of the feather here. So we'll take a lot of this out. I just want to leave an indication here. And sometimes, uh, you know, I'll go back and forth several times here. Just want to leave an indication of his wing. And I paint out a lot. So I, you know, and this is generally those of you that paint with me and follow the channel a lot know this is what I do. I, do, I tend to put on too much and paint back. So now I'm going to go burnt sienna and some of my blue darker here, maybe a bit of green. So I'm a little darker and don't cover the whole thing again. Just take out some of those dark, some of the, Add some other shadows there to the wing. And you can spend, you know, depending upon how much time you have as an artist, you can uh, spend quite a bit of time in here making some of these smaller feathers absolutely perfect. I'm not going to spend that time. I want it in here around his head. I want this whole story to be about his head here. So go a little darker. 
One more burnt sienna here. And uh, just pull down some of these, give the idea of other that the feathers are kind of fading out here. So you just kind of walk them down here on the sides here. Walk some of those shadows down there that you just pick up some of that that some of that tone and everything is just softening down and fading out here put a bit more dark up into some of these big front ones add some more Right up in there to some of those flight feathers there. Yeah, so this will give a pretty nice look, I think, to him. A little different. And uh, take some of that real dark. Work some of that through here. And put a little burnt sienna in there. Take out some of those little points. So it's mostly just brush calligraphy in as I go out here. I just want to keep the calligraphy there. So if you see that, let's go back. That's my number four. I'm going to go back up a bit bigger. And I'll add open medium because I want this to stand a little proud, a little bit thicker. Let's... Uh, Imagine some of the other lighter strokes that he might have. A little more yellow here. And so I just want to do this very much. I, I just love the brushwork. So I want to keep that brushwork here. So I'm, instead of making a whole bunch of perfect feathers, I love brush calligraphy and the feeling of the brush calligraphy. So I'm going to keep that. Let's just pull a bit of that through here. So see, I'll, I'll start like this and I'll put on, and like I tell you, I put on too much. Then I'm going to take some burnt sienna, some of my blues right in here like this, and just take some of it out. Stroke through that, take some of it out. And you remember, you're, you're wet into wet here, so don't push it too much, I mean, don't do it too much or else it'll all become one color. So you gotta, you gotta change colors a bit here. Let's go more up towards the shoulder here. Out there like that. Let's push a bit of that light, giving some of the There, like that. And, uh, yeah, let's get some of the burnt sienna and blue here. A little darker. Here. Build this part of his body here. See, I just want those calligraphy strokes. Just boom, boom. So, I like this. So, I'll just take and just stroke out. Gives the idea of that. You know, push in and let those edges... There, he has that other wing over there, which is a little more brown, a little darker. So let's just kind of give an edge of it, an idea of it. I'll thin now, thin as I go to the outside. So I'm going to thin this way out and just do some calligraphy strokes here that just kind of shape his body a bit like this as they come down. Now, sometimes as I get down to the bottom of something like this, I'll take and I'll just scrub it like that to get the, the feeling of his body and stuff there heading off. Or, like, this would be a good thing to do. you got to get brave. I'm going to take some water into my... This is the solvent technique. Take some water and just blur this back edge right like this, right out so that he becomes, and I might go back and forth between the brush and that until I get the solvent look that I like here. 
here like that. But I do like that, you know, sometimes I, like that. I just might leave that, you know, that, that looks kind of kind of nice in there like that, that just taking that away here. Like that, that taking that away like that. This looks kind of interesting, kind of different, you know. And, uh, but every, you know, every painting that you do is going to be a little different and just find the rhythm that you like. It, uh, and it's for me, as I find a rhythm I like, that that also sells because, you know, and, and that my customers like, my students like. I'll find that, that little look. And sometimes I'm, I'm painting for my customers. Sometimes I paint for just the pure fun of painting, you know. Sometimes it's just like, okay, we're never going to be able to sell this thing, but boy, is it fun, <laughs> you know. Sometimes I have those. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to our three-quarter inch brush here. And I think maybe I'm going to do blue here first. You know, that blue is really kind of good. So a little, just a touch bright. Let's thin this. This time, instead of water, let's use some extender so we don't cut a hole here. And we'll push that dark right back up there where that is supposed to be. Right up over the edge of that sienna there a bit. Let's thin this out. Here, like that. Just drop in some nice, nice verticals there as well. Now you can soften the whole look. You know, I mean, how much you do, that's that's up to you. You know, I mean, do you want to come in and soften some of that look, and uh, or you know, adding more light, adding more light to it is going to soften it. So let's just take a look. So adding a bit of that light in there softens that look, opaques the color a bit, and softens the, the look of that. You know, which is kind of neat there as well. And then you can always take it and... I like to play back and forth a few times until I get what I like with um, the colors. But I do like that. And push just a bit of that over onto this side. Sometimes I, instead of doing just all lines, I'll smear out an area, which is nice. And some, sometimes it's just great to take a dirty paper towel just to take the white of the board and stuff down and just uh, tone it down just a bit here. And just by the dirty color in your paper towel is enough to, to do some of that. And that just leaves, you know, the the nice uh, light here of the, of the eagle. But you can also lighten some of this up. So if I want everything to look softer, let's get warm by a little bit of yellow. You know, I, I, I play all different kinds of looks. So see, I can put some of these lights right back up over here and soften the overall look of the painting. And this is the fun part that I like to play with. I look at that reaction of that burnt sienna and some of that color right in there. And, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll bring the two together, you know, value-wise here or with a tone here, a bluish kind of gray here. And I like to keep the strong horizontals because he's more vertical, like I said earlier. So I do like to keep that, but, you know, working some of those colors like that, that's kind of pretty. And sometimes it takes you a... A little bit to find it. Sometimes you might get frustrated at it and then just put it away for a little bit and then go back. You know, come back later. There's nothing that that you're doing now that has to be done wet on wet. Sometimes it takes a little you to get away from it for a little bit and uh, you know before another idea starts to come your way. Let's take a bit of the darker, a bit of that blue, maybe even a bit more blue than this and uh, Strike that right back there. That just gives that nice uh, bit to him. Now, 
So I like that overall. That's going pretty good. I think I could have... Let me uh, pull out some more light texture. I think I could have a bit more light texture stroke. Right up here. Get rid of that little bit of bead of texture right there. And uh, I do like it where it kind of pulls down towards that beak at the end there. So I'm going to angle some of that down. Right in there. Get some of that nice texture. And again, you know, use some of those softer grays. Just some softer grays here to round the back side back here. And uh, any time, any place that you might have gone a little excessive with the light, you can work some of those tones back in there. Grab that now. I put that gray in, see, and then I can come back and just lightly push in and still leave a little bit of that gray. Lightly push in and uh, shape up his head there just a bit. Yeah, like that. That's better. So I like that it he's not at quite as sleek looking right underneath there. So I could have, in other words, it's a little too jolly right here. So just take a bit of shadow and just push a bit of that out. Just like that. Let's, um, and then I think he's getting pretty close. Sometimes when I get this and I was like, okay, you know, I pretty much like him. Now it's just a matter of setting them aside for a bit and looking at it. Go have a few minutes away from them and then you come back and see, oh, what do you want to do, you know, to them. Overall, I think that's pretty good. I do, you know, I'm looking at the monitor right here, which reflects that camera. I do like that. This cuts a little bit more right there. I took that off with that paper towel and I thought that was a great idea. Well, I still think it's kind of a great idea, but it cuts off. I want that line. I want that powerful line. And I do that so that the viewer's eye pulls into the, the eagle here a bit. So I do want that powerful line on that back right there. That's kind of neat there, like that. Just And see, I and so if I feel the line is too powerful, I break it. That's the impressionism that I really like. Is you know within within paintings, I I love those impressionisms, and so I like to add those in even here onto his his head. Now that I got some of that out here, that's really great to add a few little marks here. So it's not quite so smooth because he isn't smooth back here. There we go. Just like that. That's he isn't smooth back there. But you know, there's a beautiful light, really light, light one right here that's just out a bit. I think I'll let that because it's gonna dry down. So don't judge it right away until it dries down. When and you know, it, the value is gonna go about a one value darker when it starts to dry down. So don't judge it until it dries down. You know whether or not you're going to keep that. And I like this little bit pulling down a little farther here. You can see when that's dry like that, it's very easy to draw. And I can take any gray and paint back in there and shadow some of that back, give a little more depth. We can get that burnt sienna back in there if we wanted back in there. Oh, it all adds it. It's all just fun. It's all, you know, great, great fun. Let all that dry there, see if you need any more. You know, I could have just a little bit more dollopy kind of shadows up around those, uh, up and around in here, which is some of that great contrast up and around the eye. And sometimes I just use little taps and marks of the brush here just to break it up and add that in. His eye ring could go a touch darker, which is the, the darker ring around his eye there. And which really forces the viewer's eye in here contrast-wise. So that could come in just a touch more. But that's all 
final adjustments. You get the idea. Now it's just, don't play with it. If you play with it too much, you'll lose your all up primer, your spontaneity to it. And so you don't wanna, you don't wanna do that. That's just a touch dark, but I'll fix that. So, but you don't, so you don't wanna lose that spontaneity. But, uh, um, you know, just adding a few more little things just to see how much contrast you wanna have in yours. It's kind of fun. It's kind of a, it's a fun way to go. The Eagle is a tough one because of the light because it's so white and you can get him so opaque and not have enough interest in there. So get your grays and stuff in there. Set your foundations of your strokes with your grays and stuff. And the other thing is I have blues and so it would be nice to see little touches of blue. You know, that's what a, a, an impressionist would do too or what a lot, not every one of them, but you know, what an impressionist would do is we would touch into the body here with little little bits of the blue here, especially into the shadow sides, which just, you know, just adds a, a, a beautiful tone, you know, even right back up into him here. Just sketch around with some of the blues. Those are kind of pretty, you know, they they add a lot in, into the bird. So just lots of, lots of things that you can do. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you guys. I'm going to let this dry. I might even just add more and more, a few more bits of texture right up in there. But uh, those of you in the memberships, I'll put a photo of the, the final of the painting up there, a nice close up that you can uh, take it off of. And you can even, you know, take a traceable off of it or pattern off it if you want, okay? And uh, help you paint that up. He's on 16 by 20. You can put him up on a 14 by 18, thin him down just a little bit. It's a great, fun little painting. Took us not quite an hour and a half to get through. Less talking and stuff, maybe now we're dead, <laughs> okay? If you uh, want to see more of this type and, and, and have some more fun with this types of paintings and stuff, leave me a comment down there. I would love to hear about it. Don't forget to click like, and those of you that are new to the channel, please subscribe. Give a little bit more of his shoulder there. Please subscribe. And... Um, and, you know, that would help our channel grow quite a bit more. We're looking for ways to help our channel grow and show you guys a little bit more about painting. And again, everything that I do, all the colors, everything I do, look to the video description. Everything is in there, okay? And just leave a comment. I try to answer all my comments. You go back through all my videos. I'm answering all the comments. So, you know, if you have a question or something like that, I'll try to do that, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll look forward to doing the next one. Like I said, in the last video, lean the right way, that big long horn back there, we're going to do that. And I have a big horse, two horses and riders back there. And we're going to be doing that western. I'm going to break it up into three videos, painting the long horn, painting the landscape, painting the uh, horse and rider. And uh, we'll get that started up. That's coming up next, okay? Alrighty, I'll see you guys later.